so the law of attraction worked for her. Or she got lucky and her cancer went into remission. I'm sorry, I don't want to take anything away from her, but I find this quite offensive. What about all the other women who have struggled with breast cancer? What about all the people who have struggled with cancer, period, who have gone through far worse and suffered far more? Did they just not want it enough? This completely insults all of the people who beat the battle with cancer after years of struggle. And what about those who lost? Would you stand at their graveside and say, Gee, I guess they didn't visualize it right. They should have watched more Charlie Chaplin movies? Even worse, this idea can result in a form of performance anxiety. The patient now feels obligated to do all of this extra stuff to get better, and that can actually increase his stress, which is the last thing he needs to do at that point. It can also lead to feelings of guilt when he doesn't get any better. It's just like those faith healers. You didn't get any better, you didn't have enough faith. After you think about it, the law of attraction completely stops looking like the fuzzy wuzzy feel good philosophy they're making it out to be. If you have a disease and you're focusing on it and you're talking to people about it, you're going to create more disease cells. Oh God, it's coming back. Cancer cells make more cancer cells because their DNA has been damaged and they no longer have the instructions telling them how to properly die. That doesn't have the first thing to do with what you're telling people. Other diseases are caused by bacteria or viruses. How are they the product of your body? They're invading your body. But then they look out and they see things that they do not want, terrible things that they do not want to live and that they do not want to see others live. And they say, we've got to do something about getting rid of those things. But they don't realize that as they push against the unwanted, they add power to it. Oh, it's getting worse. What is this? The way to get rid of something is not to speak out against it? Would we ever have ended slavery without people speaking out against it, fighting it, and even risking their own lives to get slaves to freedom? Imagine if someone had convinced Harriet Tubman of this bogus law. Or Gandhi. No, don't bother with that salt march. That'll just add power to what you're fighting against. How on earth does this stupid woman manage to tie her shoes in the morning? Here is a bowl of nuts that represents, I'll forget it, it's not worth it. The anti-drug movement has actually created more drugs because we're focusing on what we don't want, drugs. No, as we saw in episode four, it's because our government is taking completely stupid measures to try and stop it. But when smokers focus on quitting, they quit. When alcoholics focus on stopping their alcohol problem, it stops. It's true that you can't stop something with oppression, but treat it as a medical and psychological problem, and it works. It's not that you're fighting against the problem, it's the solutions you decide to employ. Come on, how much intelligence do you need to understand that? Oh. Oh. There is only a stream of well-being that flows, you know. Oh. It is a stream of pure positive energy. And the universe, all that we know, is abundant with only that. This is a world that is based upon well-being and well-being dramatically abounds. Oh! And when you are allowing that stream to flow in its fullness, you feel very, very good. And when you are pinching it off a bit, you feel not so good. There is only a stream of goodness or well-being which you are allowing or not. Ah! And your magnificent emotions are telling you what the mix is how you're doing in your allowing or your resisting of this connection. Hey, look, all I had to do was visualize a new head. You know, this movie was a lot more difficult for me to watch than even that stupid creationist video debunked in episode two. There's not even that much to debunk about it. It's really just an hour and a half of them saying the same thing over and over and over again just like cult leaders do. They just made a whole lot of immature feel-good statements, and like all fraudsters, they started with some basic truths that we all know. If you have a positive attitude, 
things tend to work out better for you and you can do more. If you try to solve problems by oppression, you'll fail. But they went beyond this and made a completely bogus religion out of it and it's not based on anything even remotely rational. If there were anything at all to the law of attraction, then why have we only seen real prosperity in the last couple of centuries? Talk all you want about the rich people of the past who supposedly knew the secret, they didn't have it that great. Countless rulers and other successful men and women in history have had all sorts of problems. King Louis lost his entire top row of teeth from the lack of germ theory and antibiotics. Why wasn't the law of attraction working then? Why has it only been in the last two centuries that we've conquered the problem of starvation? Why are the poor in our time so much better off than the rich and powerful of yesteryear? All of these things coincided with the Enlightenment Revolution, which brought about the concepts of individual liberty and the free market. And it happens in the parts of the world where this concept flourishes. These things allowed people to create wealth for themselves and each other in a way unprecedented in the history of the world. And not because they were better at visualizing it, but because they were being the busy, clever, and industrious people that humans have always been in lands finally free of oppression. And we didn't become free of oppression by ignoring it, like these idiots tell you to do. We became free by fighting tyranny and oppression, by railing against injustice, and by denying that any human being has authority over another. If these law of attraction nut bars had their way, no progress would have ever been made. Indeed, what is science if not a clear and blinding refutation of the entire law? Have we not seen clearly that reality does not conform to the delusional? From the light bulb to the theory of relativity, these things came about not because people visualized them, but because they worked hard to understand how the universe works, a way completely independent of our thoughts, hopes, fears, and desires. And that is perhaps the most profound revelation of them all, that we can shed off the ego behind things like the law of attraction, the idea that the universe exists just for us, and can turn it all around, find out how the universe works, and instead of trying to make the universe conform to our wishes, make our wishes, goals, and desires fit the universe. That is what has given us space travel and the internet, life-saving medicine and the wealth of our economy. It's something that the cretins who made this movie will never understand. But for the sake of the future progress of all mankind, I hope the rest of us do.